Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today with Tariq. We're gonna be lifting the Jeep. So as you can see, first off, we have our coils. We have our JKS quick disconnects, JKS track bar, four Fox shocks, BDS suspensions parts kit, as well as BDS suspension, four muffler spacers, which are gonna go in the muffler to make it easier, yes. Yes, okay. Yes, as he says. So, what are we gonna do, front or rear first? Rear, let the front cool down. This is the rear. Yeah, the rear. Okay, so we're gonna do the rear. Um, quick thing for you to note is if you've been driving, which has warmed up your exhaust, be careful because if you're doing the spacer kit, which you should, um, what is it, 2012 and yeah, four? Anything with a 3.6, make sure that you put the spacer kit in. Um, on top of that, make sure you shoot some uh, penetrating fluids on. Let's get underneath and show. On both sides, if you get down under the Jeep, you see that right there, that exhaust joint right there. Shoot that with penetrating fluid and let it sit there while you do the rear. So that way you have more chances of getting that separated, especially if you don't have a brand new Jeep because of the fact that, or, and they use a lot of road salt because as you can see, ours is already pretty rusted. This thing only has like 60,000 kilometers on it. So what, 30,000 miles, something like that. On top of that, just making sure that uh, you have Go through the instructions, make sure you have all your parts. Number one thing I would say is make sure also is if you're doing the BDS suspension, it's really cool. They give you all your torque specs in here. So I highly suggest that you get yourself a cheap or at least get a torque wrench that you know works. So that way you can torque this thing to spec. So first thing before we start doing anything here, if we're gonna be starting with the rear, so you should chuck off your fronts. If you have a standard or even an automatic, if you really wanna be super careful. First step in the instructions is to crawl under the Jeep and we're going to take out one bolt which is holding the track bar to the rear. So if you're at the back of your Jeep, you just go down, whoop, whoop, and up here, you can see it above the one shock strut right there. See that golden bolt right there? Touch it with my flashlight. We're gonna loosen that off and we're gonna drop that track bar. So, this was up here. You have said bolt and then on the back of it, I dropped it, but there is a nut right here. So, you need a 21 for the reverse side, and then you need a 21 to uh, take it out. I just rested the uh, <coughs> wrench on the bottom here, and then as we pulled it out, boom, it drops out. Now, you either have two choices. You could actually take out the struts while it's down here, because the sprigs are what are gonna hold the whole thing together. So you could, technically, just take your shocks out. So up there, you're gonna see those two bolts. Take those out, those are both 16s. This one right here is put an 18 here and an 18 box wrench on this side. Lean it up here on the tower so that way the box wrench is there and just loosen this bolt off so we can completely remove the strut. After you get that out, just grab this and give it a wiggle. There you go. One out, go to the other side, repeat. Next, if you look up on your frame, you'll see the sway bar links here. Just uh, take off the four bolts. There's two on this side and two on your other side. After you're finished with these two, jump up here to the 10 mil on the brake line. Let's loosen that one off so that way the brake line is nice and off of there because we're gonna have some extension clips that are gonna go on there. So if you're looking right here, you're gonna go underneath and if you look up right here, you'll see a silver clip. I just was playing with it to see if it would be easy and I ended up already popping it out. That's for your diff breather here. You're just gonna slip it forward and then it comes out. And then that should be loose. So next thing is, is just like I said, copy everything from this side to the other side. See the diff right there. Look up at the top bottom of the body there, or some people will call it the tub. You will see that 
blinkily winkly dinkly dink there it's all benty twervy you want to loosen those two 10 mils on the center of the camera there and you're going to just take those right off so they're nice and down so that way when we're doing some stuff it isn't going to wreck them we're going to bring the jack over here lift it up put a jack stand underneath then that side we're going to go lift it up put another jack stand underneath on that side and then what we're going to do is uh after we have it up when you're going up just make sure you get in the frame so just like that just as you can see he's going right to the frame you want to make sure you have something sturdy and so that way when we drop it ta-da once you have both sides done you inspect give it a wiggle if you want and make sure that as you can see it's good so with your jack stand just there is a oh crap it's gonna drop it's right there. We'll extend it. Exactly. And yeah, we will extend it too as we go up higher. It's kind of like your rock climbing string, so that way if something happens, it's close. And once that's up there, now we can go and we can go check out our coil. Is there anything hanging up or no? Does it look like it? Oh yeah, that's the other thing to check for. Nice and loose. Nice and loose. Sway bar is off. It's ABS sitting down. ABS line is loose too. Yeah, ABS line in the back is loose. Oh, still got a way to go. Okay, I'm gonna slide out from underneath, and that's all you're doing. You're gonna slowly go up. If you have two people, have someone watch that ABS line, just so it doesn't overextend. When you get to a certain point, all you're going to do is you'll see right here you're gonna comp I grabbed it with my hand squeezed up don't grab it from the bottom grab it from this coil and I pressed up into the body and then I pulled it out a little bit and then I turned it until it wound itself out you don't have to do that if you can compress it enough just get it if you notice that your ABS line is getting too tight it's on a Christmas tree so just grab it wiggle it until it comes out now that this is free you'll see your isolator here we're gonna reuse that with the new spring okay so oh, stop and this way by drop. And then brake line extensions. So brake line extensions, track bar drop, That's right there. Drop, yeah. We got sway bolts. Sway bar drop and it's your bump stop. Oh, sway bar drop, bumps off. Oh yeah, that makes sense, okay. And then of course you have two bolt packs that come with it. This one actually says 748. Oh yes, don't forget this. That's, yes, this will be with this. And then these ones, Right here is bolt pack 709, and we will use that for those. Okay. So, you see where that yellow piece is? Directly below it is the old bump stop right there. What we're gonna be doing is you can see there's two holes in it. So just like that, one bolt through each side, nice and silver like that, and then now we're just gonna put the washer in that. I just wanna show you this so you can see the position. You'll see two bolts on the other side for a smaller lift, for like a two inch, and then this is for three inch. Once you have that lined up like so, that's a shaft of screw going downward so that way the nut screws on from the bottom. You're gonna put a half inch box wrench on the bottom and then ratchet it from the top. I tighten it as tight as it would go with one hand. Again, I wasn't gonna try and get my torque wrench in there because it would not fit. It's a knuckle basher for sure. So once you get your ratchet in there and you tighten it, I just tighten it as tight as I could go with one hand and it's a nylock style nut anyway so it's gonna lock itself uh, so when you put that tension on there, you should be fine. It's a bump stop, so it'll hold in there. Next thing's our spring. That's your old one. Much smaller compared to that. Super long, stubby. So we're going to reuse this. Again, when you're putting it on, I'm going to aim my light up here for a sec. Let me get it aimed. All right, up there. <coughs> Ta-da, that goes on there. Then you put your spring underneath. You might need to jack it up a little bit more to easily get it in there. You might have to use a pry bar to... So things to note, let's go over. Little end down here, fat end, put this up on here. Note the way I have the spring. The tail aims towards the butt of the Jeep. Holy but Jesus, <laughs> we, well, we didn't max the jack out. We put it up pretty high. And after we did that, I used my wrecking bar. If you have a pry bar or a big screwdriver, you could try it. I would suggest wrecking bar. And all we did is once you jack it up and you get it to the point of being right here, it can be troublesome to get onto here. So you just lift up on the tube a little bit 
and then if you have a second set of hand, as you're lifting the bottom of the spring, you slip it on. Once you slip it on, spin it so it's right where it should be. And that, you see our new coil, you can see our new bump stop. Now it's time to go to the other side, and I'm going to snap my fingers and it's going to be done. Let's start on assembling our shocks. So, a little bit of WD or a little bit of lubricant. Soak your bushing and your inside collar. Then it's soak on the inside there. As you can see, we have strap on. You take these, take wood block. Look at this. It's in. Take the collar, wood block. In. One swift stroke is all it takes from Yota. The bolt that is closest to the end of the Jeep, the butt, thread that in so that way you have a place to hook the shock. Then once you hook that in, you're going to screw, lightly screw in the one down there. And then, if you're ja fully jacked up, you should be able to slip it into the collar down here and then put your long bolt in with the nut. All right, so we have the 16 on the torque wrench. I set the torque wrench to 30. Go up top here, those two top bolts, torque them both down to 30. So I got two of them. One, the strap was already cut because, well, who knows? And then one of them, of course, had the strap. So the one that already had the strap cut with the uh, Jeep at maximum lift, I was able to just uh, actually drop the Jeep a little bit to slide that bolt in. And then this one that actually had the strap, when I lowered it all the way down, it was still a little too high. So I just had Tariq lean on the bumper a little bit and it compressed the spring and I just slid the bolt inside out, put the bolt stem on here, and now we're gonna torque these to spec. Once you've torqued this to 55, copy this to the other side, and then we can start on our drop assemblies. That's it. So if your vehicle doesn't have speed nuts in it, you would probably need these nuts here. Since my 2015 already does, take your two washers, take two bolts. You're gonna line up your sway bar just where we took them out. It goes bolt, washer, and then sway bar spacer. And then after that, you just bolt that in. When it comes to the sway bar links, make sure you put that in loosely, loosely, then loosely, and loosely. After you do that, snug them all up, and put them at 30 foot-pounds of torque. So now we're gonna do our brake line drop. You need the factory bolt, then you need the new bolt, which is going to go through, two washers, the lock nut, and for me, it's the really cool skull plate. For you, it might be anything. So we're gonna use the nose as the new bolting hole, and this will lock in to the old one. On the brake line side, all you do is bolt, washer, skull, other, their brake line, washer, nut, and then if you want, you can leave that loose, you just push this in and then put in your old 10 millimeter bolt right here. No real torque spec for that, just literally bolt the 10 mil above and then put a box wrench on there and tighten up the uh, 11 mil from both sides so that's snug and tight and the lock washer and that nut should hold together. It's not like it's anything structural so there isn't really a torque spec for it. Oh, so we have our drop bracket, our sleeve and our bolt packet for the drop bracket. What you're gonna to need to do, is you're gonna to have to pop off this tire. So make sure your locks are still up front, or your, or your blocks, and then you're gonna to want to, if you have a one locking nut like I do, put that on, loosen off, don't completely of course take them off, but crack your bolts loose. So I just lifted up the axle, put a jack stand underneath it so if it comes down, it's gonna go right onto the jack stand, and now we're gonna take the tire off. All I did is, after I loosened our lugs off, rolled the tire away, and now we have perfect access. Look at those big, beautiful shocks. This is going to go around here, and you'll see, see how it's got like an ear on it? You're gonna slide that inside. That's gonna go like this. So you can see that side is in, this side is out. Now, this is where that collared bolt would come in. You're gonna put that collar in here, bolt washer, 
collar nut or washer nut. Then you've got that one with the very wide uh, washer on the back. That uh, really wide washer will be on the inside because that's going to go up and on the inside of here. So it holds that. After you have that big fat washer, like so, then the skinny one will be holding on the other side. This last one is for the new hole we're about to drill, which will be right here. First, I suggest we kind of bolt everything in, all the, all that stuff bolted here, so we can drill a hole, bolt and washer, slide it through, so it holds this, hold this still like this, and then just mark this. You can either mark it with a felt, or if uh, you just hold it up, and you could just punch it with a center punch right now, or you could try and use a Phillips. Just basically make a small dent there so when you go to drill it, your drill bit doesn't wander. That's all mine is, this little shiny dot. Now all you're gonna do is take three different sized drill bits and work it all the way up to a half inch hole. Initial one was one of these, then I jumped up to one of these, and then I went straight to the half inch which is still on the drill. After that, got that. We also lubed the drill with a little bit of WD and it worked kind of fine. So from this point, let's start bolting this thing together. So when putting in the bolts, first put in this one and then you're going to have to take your finger, slide it in behind after you put the first bolt in, again bolt washer, put on small washer the same size as this and then bolt and just lightly thread it on so it still moves the bracket. Then it's down here, bolt, regular washer, fat washer with a small hole, and then bolt. And then from now, this point, big bolt with washer. And then we're going to work that into here. Once you have this all seated nice and pretty like, you have to do 40, 40, 125. But with this one, you're going to want to tighten it when it's on the ground. So just leave this, like you can tighten this one up a little bit more so it's kind of snug. And then we're gonna lightly put in our bar. And then once we put in our bar, then we can put that one uh, in and then do 125. Loose. Tight, tight, loose. loose. <laughs> now for this, what you can try and do is get your big friend, Tariq, to lean on the other side of the Jeep and we're gonna see if we can get this to line up. So since we have the car actually jacked up on the axle, not on the body, we've got the full weight of the vehicle on here, so we can tighten these bolts. If you didn't have that, and you actually were jacked up off of the frame, I would suggest you put your tire on first, put on your bolts, uh, or lug nuts, sorry, and then when you lower the vehicle, then you would put it on, because then you'd have the weight of the vehicle from this point, your rear suspension lift is done. You can put your tire on now, or if you're upgrading to your 35s, your 33s, whatever you're upgrading to. If you're going with bigger tires, just a quick thing, I'm gonna do this before I put the wheel back on, but I'm gonna be popping out the inside liner here because as many have told me, the first time you get any sort of travel when you're off-roading, you end up ripping them off if you got 35s on. So rather than have to deal with that disappointment later, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna remove all these Christmas trees here, as we call them Christmas tree poppers. So we got that one, I'll get that one after. So one, two, three, four, and then if you look up here, five, six, seven. Once you have all of them popped out, take a poker, put it on the tip of the rivet like so, and then either squish it in or knock it with a hammer and you're just gonna punch them out. You just knock out the center, so it looked like that. I just took that poker tool, smacked it into the center, center let go, now this is loose in here. You can do them all if you want and then you can just pull down on each one and they'll come right out. It's out. All I did is, after I pulled out each of the rivets, just grabbed it, worked it out of the fender in the corner here up to here after I worked it out, pulled it down and out. Another quick note, see these uh, silver pieces that are on each of the lugs here? 
or studs, you take those off and the reason why is that way for your new rims they sit flush. Same pick tool that you used to punch out those rivets, take that, bend these little fins up. When you bend them up and out of the way, it comes on and off a little easier and it gives you a grab point. Put your tire on, put these on loosely, and then once you have them loosely on, just go around. Remember, go in a star pattern. You might have to lean up against the rim to make sure that you get them just right up against it. And once the uh, wheel starts to turn, at that point, you're gonna drop your vehicle down so you can get proper torque onto these lugs. For the tire here, make sure that when you're tightening it, you do it in a star pattern. And on the torque wrench, I just set it to 110 pounds. You really, really, really want to get an adjustable track bar if you can. And if you're going to buy any one of them, the JKS one is apparently the best to go with. And not to bother with any other one. So that's why I ended up with that one. Let's get underneath. And you just want to look at the shape because when you get underneath there, you want to make sure you don't accidentally undo any of your steering. I don't think you will. But there is a lot going on down under here. So, that's the top. If we creep around the corner, let's see here. We're gonna see the bolt right above. There, so, see right there, that's the bolt. So let's see if I can give you a better shot. There's the tire. You go past the steering, right there, you'll see a couple rusty bolts. Or, well, maybe you won't see rusty bolts, I do. But if you follow that one, see how it's got the big kink in there, just like the new one we're putting in. So, just undo the bolts on both sides and remove that bar before we jack up the vehicle. Oh, it's going to take some pressure. I used my breaker bar. If you have an impact, you can always use that too, just to break the tension, but it's this bolt. Just loosen it off, it's cool because it has a little wing on here, so that way, when you loosen it, it's really easy, because this bumps up against the metal, and doesn't mean you need a box wrench. So just loosen that bolt out, and if you want, you can go up top over here, and just take this completely out of here. There's a comparison of them side by side. You can definitely see this one's thicker. Oh, and a lot heavier. <laughs> This one's got some weight, but this is just, oh, <laughs> heavy duty. So, the bolts are the same size as the rear. It was 22 on the back nut and 21 on the bolt head. If you're looking at the tire, you'll see that sway bar link right here. This is an 18, this is an 18. Just take that link right out. We might as well just take those out because we're gonna be putting in the disconnects. That upper link, it's going to be a 19 box wrench, 18 ratchet. If you're looking at the tire, creep around the corner, and right there. So, brake lines. Take out that 10 mil. So, we're going to put the drop in. First, grab this. Uh, you'll see it's in here. Put both your fingers like this and pull it towards you. Just enough so that way we can get this 10 mil in so we can loosen it. Before I lift the Jeep, I'm going to quickly put these exhaust spacers in. So, what you need to do, come over to the wheel. And we're gonna look up. If you remembered at the beginning, I showed you, you need to soak those with penetrating fluid. Now you're gonna take your half inch, put it on there, and uh, remove it with a ratchet. Depending on how long these have been on, these could be a really fun chore for you. Just do that to both sides, as you can see. Nice and floppy. All you do is half inch, half inch, and now, See that at the end of the twisty elbow? You're gonna go and quickly loosen those ones off. There's one bolt on the driver's side here. You're gonna probably be wishing that you had a ratcheting box wrench for. I do, but as you can see, it's very, there's not a whole lot of room to get a ratchet in there. So, ratcheting box wrench it is. After we get these two, as you can see, new bolts, four washers, pretty easy. Now here's the thing, passenger side one is gonna be a little longer. So if we line these up, you're gonna see, yeah, it's definitely this one. Look at the band. See how this band is like way smaller? So this is gonna be our passenger side, driver's side. 
you'll also see two sizes of bolts. Pretty obvious, shorties go with the short, long ones go with the longer. Short side, two short bolts, driver side. Let's get underneath and we're just gonna be pulling back on the exhaust. Once you pull back on the exhaust, which I already sort of did earlier, it creates a gap. I'm pretty far back here. Now, when you're putting this in, it's important to note, there we go, I think that's better. So we have a bit of space, all I did is I grabbed and I ripped back on it. You've also got this, this big long pipe, which is going from one side to the other, grab this, pull back, and when you pull it back, you're gonna slip this in between the two. So when I put it in, I actually just put my foot on here, grabbed onto this brace, and I pushed back as far as I could. This allowed me to squeeze it in just, and then I just lightly threaded in the two bolts. Do not tighten these yet. Let's go to the other side, put on the other piece. One side has a beveled in edge, and one has a beveled out. Just make it match. You want this to slip into the one that's beveled out. The one that's beveled in is going to slip into there. So, the passenger side will go in like that. Now for the passenger side, I'm just going to get another foot brace here, grab this and just yank her back like so, and then I'm going to get that in there and align it. What a beaut. Look how it lined up. Perfect. So. Now what you're going to do is just snug these both up at the same rate, same with the other side, go over there, snug them up, and make sure that they're both equally balanced, monitor them as you tighten them. Got driver's side lined up as best I could, got that one best up I could, I uh, torqued the one bolt on here to 20, and then I torqued the other ones to 20, All right, and then, uh, well I didn't torque just one bolt, I what I did is I cinched them both up, and then I slowly work both of them, one with an open box wrench, one with the uh, ratchet. And then I just torque the one to 25, match the other side, and then did the same to those two. Extensions are in. Next thing, crack the pressure on the bolts. All right, so we want the vehicle very close to the ground, so that way we can get the spring and the strut out super easy. So what I suggest you do is I had the jack on here, I jacked it up on a bit of an angle, and then I move the jack stand and I put it right here so it's just on the axle there. So now that I have it right there, I'll be able to raise the body up quite a bit to get that spring out. Wow, it is definitely, as you can see, down low. I have the axle stands on the lowest setting. We have it right on the axle so that way when we lift the body, we'll be able to get these springs much easier. So 18 mil box wrench on the back bolt, have it resting on the axle, this one, and just loosen after we get that one out. That one's going to be more fun. I've heard that sometimes you have to trim the battery box, so we might be doing that. I managed to squeeze a 5 8 up top, and then down here an 11 16 will go on this one to hold the shock from spinning, and now we just loosen that bolt. And then we're going to jack up the vehicle on the one side, just the body, not the axle, so that way we can get this spring out. I just lifted it on the link again right here, and if you take a look, this is like easy to come out now. But I'm going to leave this here for a sec, just specking it out. Make sure again that this bracket has been loosened. You can see I've got them right about the max where I want to bring them, and it's wide open for me to work on. Now it's time to see how I'm going to put one, the bump stop in, because that's the next thing that we have to do. We have to put those bump stops and bolts in. So if you take a look, exact center of your bump stop, make another dent just like we did for the ones in the rear, or the one spot there, and then all you're going to do is smack it with a hammer so you've got that dent, and we're going to gauge slowly with a couple drill bits up to 3 8 So there's the bump stop, there's a new 3 8 hole. We're going to go in from the side there, and if you just use your wrench, you might have to use something sticky but you want to slide that bolt in there so that way we can drop the bolt down and you're going to thread it on. Now it goes bolt, washer, bump stop and then on the bottom you're going to thread, put on the other washer and thread on the nut. Swivel head socket kind of helps if you got one. 
All I did is I used some green painter's tape, lined up the washer and the nut kind of, held it together, and then you can slip it in and around. Now, now that I know this method's going to work, it's time to put that in first, the new spring. The new spring is going to be very big and very hard. So if you put that uh, bump stop in, it's going to make your job 10,000 times worse. So let's first see you just tuck it into the coil like you can so. Zip tight to the metal to make it easier. Yeah. Bam, she's in. Went in from this side. Again, maximum extension. I checked here, we still had play in our lines. Super close though. Next thing to do is with this Freedom, we're gonna take her off. I used a reusable zap strap. Just do that. Now you're gonna put your, uh, we're gonna try and line up this, put the bolt in, and slowly screw the bolt in. This will be the worst part probably of the entire thing. 916's box wrench, if you want up top, and then 916's ratchet. Feel for that uh, hole once again. So it's on. Again, torque is between 20 and 30 foot pounds. You can try and get in there with a torque wrench if you want. I just went until I couldn't give her anymore. And after I did that, that's way more than enough. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's a bump stop, so it's not going to really escape from in here. It just might make some weird noise. Anyways, uh, let's get onto our sway bar. Now, we're going to be putting in some JK disconnects. And they are right here. Look at these beautiful bad boys. What you should also do when we're fitting for our shocks, take this bolt, which is our lower shock bolt that went through here. And next, we're going to be choosing our stuff that is right here. You're going to have two different sizes collars. See how loose that is? No good. You have this one. See, so you're going to have two different ones. Bam, too big. Perfect. Sits nice and tight. There's the bushings. Hammer them in like we did yesterday on the bottom there. So just organizing the parts, we have, you'll see that there's two long ones. One of them is like a blunt hammer, <laughs> and then this one is still aimed like the other. This is your driver's side, passenger side is the blunt one. Um, each gets one rubber, two pullouts. Depending on your model, you might have to drill your sway bar bigger. I didn't have to. If you do, it's a half inch. Tools you're gonna need to put in the next step. You're gonna need either a flat punch or a strong little screwdriver and then it'll have to slip through the center of this, like so. So that way you can turn it because that's how you tighten these. The other thing that's good to have and is optional but highly recommended is Loctite. So that way, even though it's an iLock, if you Loctite it, these things aren't gonna come loose. So after you've done so, as you can see, we're gonna do this. We're just gonna tighten it. As you can see, long one goes up top. Then you're gonna tie it in down here, it goes inside. So that's why it's a stubby, so it can clear this. You're gonna tighten this one up, same way. Put your screwdriver through the hole there, just to hold on to the screwdriver, and then ratchet or uh, open box wrench it on. Once you've got your studs in, or your posts, now that those are set, we're gonna leave that until, of course, vehicle's back on the ground. Once you've pre-assembled your shock, like so, as you can see, it's all nicely compressed again. You're going to start the sh shock bolt right here. Put the collar through right here, and then put your nut on. Just tie the nut on. Don't. So you're going to need your bushing and your washer. You're going to put it right up against here, or you could just line it up with the shaft really quickly when we cut the strap, and then you want, the, of course, the tip of it to come right up and over to here. So once you make sure your brakes are behind here, this is on, what you're gonna do is literally death grip this, cut the strap, and if your strap's already cut for some reason, you can grab it and forcefully pull it down. It's a lot, but you can do it. And then your bushing, if you look right here, um, you can see the little ring. Make sure the little ring is facing up so it's gonna sit up and in that little ridge up there. And then now we're gonna tighten this bolt. When you tighten this bolt, uh, there isn't really a foot poundage. You just want to compress this rubber and you'll see it crush. 
face bushing down like so and then squeeze it in there it's gonna be a little troublesome for me so I'm gonna save that for without a camera in my hands and then we'll slightly if we can put the bolt on if you can't get the bolt on you might have to drop the Jeep first just like this side as you've seen bushing metal plate and then nut after you lightly put that on just like so now we can lower the Jeep so we can tighten this up as you can see we have our drop we're just going to put this through here so just lightly put your hardware in and as you can see we've got a Tariq he's okay. going to be uh, bending the hard line for us a little bit more I guess and that's just so we can get a little bit more drop out of it. If you're looking right here, you're gonna see some scratch marks on mine. You'll see a breather tube. Slide that off when you're lifting it. It's a, a breather tube for your uh, case. All I did is this has been dropped down for right now. This is right here. This is undone. I ended up for this one just to give it me even more play while it's lifted. Undid this one 10 mil bolt here. If you do that, you can wiggle this free, and then the, you have even more lifting room. Spring fell out on itself. So if you go just below the axle, you'll see these bolts. We're going to be popping these out next because we're going to have to Dremel to be able to align everything properly. So, first thing you're going to want to do is pop out this bolt. So we're going to pop that bolt out. And it's on. Of course you can do that with a breaker bar. We have a breaker bar on one side and one on the other. That slips out. Time to uh, do some dremeling. We'll show you how to do that here in a second. So as you can see, Tariq has this little black disc right here. You're gonna need that. Watch what he does. So he holds it up. Oh, that's not bad. So, see how he held it up there? So how do you choose how to hold that up there? Like, did, just how it is. It's oh, perfect. So you just basically do a half moon. So get rid of basically all of this junk right here. Okay. And is that just on one side or both? All, all arm mounts. Look at that masterful cut that Tariq did. Looks really good. Good job, Tariq. So now you can see he's gonna line that up. Put that right there. That's how it looks like. Awesome. And then you just put your bolt through. Awesome. So through the dremeling process and everything, if you take a look, you're gonna see there's a little dimple right here. If you line that adjustment cam up right there so it's squared up into the bolt it'll make it a lot easier to understand why we had to use the ratchet strap to adjust to get that bolt to fit in and plus have the shim in the right area. Just showing you sway bar links are on on the driver's side. Don't forget this little black rubber grommet. We're gonna put that on here or bushing. But here's the thing. If you remove your disconnects later, make sure you take this off. You don't wanna lose this. Very easy to lose. So what you're gonna do is support the axle, lift it just a little bit off the jack stand. Once you do so, as you can see what Tariq's done here is he's tied up the axle on the one side here and he's ratchet strapped it to the frame. What he's doing is he's pulling the frame this way, so that way, Pulling the axle forward. Yeah, forward. <laughs> so that's what I meant, the axle. And he's trying to line up the hole like so. So that way he can do that. And then put the nut on the other side. So that'll just clip in there. Try and clip that on there. And uh, just remember to leave this one brake line right there by Tariq's finger nice and loose. That one. Don't bother trying to clip that back in. Get rid of that bracket assembly completely. And then we're just going to tie in that last piece. You can, I like to bend that little metal um, flange that's on it out of the way, which uh, what you do is you 
when you put it on the post, you can grab it with a pair of uh, pliers and you can bend it up a little bit. But as you can see, Tariq's just going to line that up and uh, tighten that tent up. When you're tightening those tens, don't go very tight. It's got a nylock on it. Really, you could break the post off easily, so just go one hand tight with a small ratchet. Now that we've snugged that up on both sides, now we're going to lift it up and we're going to attach the tires back on. The reason why is that way we can do all our aligning that we need to do. Now, remember, one of the major things that you should do after doing a lift kit and bigger tires is, of course, get an alignment. As you can see, Tariq is measuring distances. You're going to measure from right there to that bolt right there. Yeah. And you measure that and then you do the same on the other side. If you have to, Now what happens if you have to go one way? You just kind of push the body over? Ratchet strap. Ratchet strap across. It's all the instructions. It tells you to pull the body one way or the other. It depends on what. So you'd going. put the ratchet strap on the axle yeah, to the body? Find a spot. Perfect. On the axle, find a spot on the frame. So you could even put it right here and then attach it to a hole on the frame there. Basically. And then you would literally just ratchet until it's equal on both sides. You're going to measure from this eyelet to that eyelet of the track bar. And what you make sure you get it right in the center. It's better if you have two people for this, but if you have to do it by yourself, just halfway to halfway. After you measure halfway to halfway, then you're going to extend the track bar or make sure you loosen your lock nut. And that way you can unscrew the track bar to the size needed. After you get it to the perfect size, just tighten up your jam nut. And after you tighten up your jam nut, just snug it for now. Bolt it in. Make sure you're, that your measurements haven't changed. And then lock your jam nut. That's a pretty big nut, so you might need to have a plumbing wrench. Make sure you go through and double check your measurements multiple spots. That way you know that you know that it's right. We've got everything done. We've got our two bolts. We're using uh, pre-existing bolts, so make sure you have those saved. And the one with the wing nut goes, or the wing here, which is, uh, it locks up against the frame. That is the bolt that goes to the far end. And then the one that is open, no frame nut, is, uh, goes to this side. 130, 130, and then this one, just crank. If you've got a big pipe wrench, just crank it until you're lifting your body off the ground. That's basically it. You just don't want those coming loose. So, slide your bottom on and loosen the top until, make it parallel and make it a little bit above. Just a tiny bit above parallel to the ground. And then once you do that, we're at about, we're between nine and nine and a quarter. Again, do it to what you would like, but yeah, we are just a little bit above parallel. We put one on, then we adjusted the other one. Now we're going to lock the jam nuts and put in our pins. Now, our little pins, they just bend out like this. So, throw a 21 and 22 on and crank that to 130 again. Same with the other side and then guess what? You're lifted. Once you're done, make sure that it's still sitting in the tabs on both sides. After those are cranked to 130, you're officially lifted. Let's take a quick look at our insane tire gap, Tariq. I'm not too excited. Wow. Look at that. That's uh, a lot of breathing room. She's a lot higher. Holy smokes, that's just my rock lights hanging there, but I'll have to give you guys some better shots later. Um, I'll give you guys a way better video once the tires are on. So stay tuned for that video, and that video will give you a look at it with the new tires that are 35s, the new rims, and that'll give you the overall look. Thanks again for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Tell me what you guys thought about this video. Again, you probably noticed that the bumper changed while well, this was going on because while Tariq was dremeling, I quickly did a bumper install. That's basically it. Thanks again to Tariq once again.